ओम ज्ञान तिमीराधश्यानंजनशलाकय चक्षुन्मील जेन तस्म श्री गुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वतीदेव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात देश तारिणे नमो महावतन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय ते कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्य नामने गौर तुसे नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा सो वी वेलकम एवरी वन फॉर टूडेज डिस्कशन ऑन श्रीमद भगवद गीता द मैनुअल ऑफ लाइफ बी जी एम एल कोर्स सो बिफोर वी प्रोसीड अहेड आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट ऑल ऑफ यू एंड यू प्लीज रेज योर हैंड एंड रिकॉल वॉट वी डिस्कस जस्टरडे कैन एनी वन ऑफ यू रिकॉल Tell us what we discussed yesterday. You can unmute yourself and tell. You can raise your hand. Living body. So we discuss difference between living body and dead body. Living body undergoes six kind of changes. Yes, birth, growth, maintenance, production of byproduct, dwindling, and death. Finally, and Ganesh Po is telling we are we were discussing about controlling our mind, mind mechanism. So we started this topic, and we'll proceed in this topic ahead. Okay, and Vishnuvi is saying we discuss about relation between mind and intelligence. Good. Janvi is saying we we discuss about gross body, subtle body, and soul. Okay. Manthan is attending first class. Okay, you are welcome, and keep attending regularly. You will come to understand what we are going to discuss. And uh, intelligence, mind, and five senses. Okay, good. So at least some of you, I hope, almost eight to ten students. They recalled everything very nicely. Karan Sharir. Okay, this guy is asking question. Is there something called Karan Sharir? Yes, Karan Sharir is there, and that is nothing else but subtle body. The Sukshma Sharir is actually Karan Sharir because it becomes the Karan or cause for the gross body. So that we are going to discuss today in more detail. Yesterday, just I uh, I just mentioned about it. uh in the, with regards to this um, uh, mechanism of mind so we were discussing about mechanism of mind so we'll move ahead and we'll discuss about it how this acts like karan sharir because when we die so what exactly happens who actually dies well, this phenomena death what exactly it means can anybody tell what exactly means uh, death yes who can tell what exactly death means you can unmute and tell us there is nothing no wrong answer you can tell in hindi also if you want you can explain no problem if somebody is not comfortable in english okay vishnavi is saying when the soul leaves the body that is death yeah that's there when the soul leaves the body but what exactly it means what exactly happens at death when the physical body is no longer home for the soul that is also correct end of material body and subtle body or leaving of soul So not exactly like it, like this. Uh, 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 subtle body does not die. So what exactly death is? Uh, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains this phenomena in uh, verse number twenty-two, second chapter, verse number twenty-two. Va sam sijirnani yatha vihaya navani grahanati naro parani tatha sariraani vihaya jirnani anyani samyati navani dehe. Krishna explains this. Vasamsi jirnani. Jirnani means old and torn out. Vas vas means vas means cloth cloth. So this body Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that this gross body is like a cloth for the uh, soul. So we are wearing two kinds of cloth. One is shirt, and then inner wear is there within the shirt. So when uh, the death, what what exactly death means? Death means Taking out the shirt and wearing another shirt, but the inner wear is there and the body is there. Body is still there. So similarly, soul is wearing uh, these two kinds of cloth, vasamsi, 
uh, first is subtle body sukshma sarir uh, i'll show you the ppt you will understand so we discussed this uh, yesterday subtle body and gross body sukshma sarir and sthul sarir yeah this is the you are able to see the screen yeah okay so we discussed this yesterday so gross body means sthul sarir gross gross means uh, we can perceive it we can see it because it is made up of earth water fire air and ether and then inside the gross body is subtle body. Subtle means sukshma, which cannot be perceived through senses. Uh, the subtle body cannot be seen, cannot be heard, cannot be smelled, cannot be touched. Uh, all these uh, gross material senses cannot perceive this subtle body. But all of you know that this subtle body exists. And what is uh, the constituent of subtle body? Mind, intelligence and ego. This is the constituent of subtle body. So this is like inner wear and gross body is like shirt and we are soul, Satchitananda soul. So what exactly death means? Death means this outer garment, this gross body is no more available for the soul and subtle body. So at the time of death, subtle body does not uh, get destroyed. The subtle body made up of mind, intelligence and ego carries the soul from this gross body to another gross body. So this is exactly the phenomena of death. And uh, the mentality of this, uh, the, the condition of the subtle body takes the soul to another body. So that is why depending upon what kind of uh, uh, mentality is there especially, what kind of subtle body one has developed uh, till uh, this, uh, this uh, death, in this life, what kind of subtle body one has developed? Uh, uh, accordingly, one gets another new body. If Suppose if somebody has developed the mentality uh, uh, like an animal, uh, like a dog, so, so then surely enough, he is, uh, as soon as he leaves his gross body, uh, he is going to get a gross body of a dog. So this is the mechanism of mind. And that is why this subtle body is known as Karan Sarir. This is this becomes the subtle body made up of mind, intelligence, ego. We'll discuss in great detail about this. What, what are the functioning between mind, intelligence, ego? Ego, this false ego. Ego means uh, uh, the term ego, which we in general understand, that is just a small aspect of this false ego. That is not exactly ego. Ego, ego means a sense of identity. Every one of us have some kind of uh, sense of identity. We identify ourselves. We think of ourselves something. Uh, everyone thinks of himself something. Uh, just like I think myself that I am a boy. Uh, I think myself I am intelligent. I am very great. Or somebody may think I am very poor. Uh, I am very weak. I am very, in, very introvert, extrovert. I am not so enthusiastic. I am very enthusiastic. All these sense of identities are because of ego. Ego is an element. And false ego means to misidentify oneself. Actually, the soul has his own identity, which is, which is actually true ego. The soul is spiritual and soul is actually the part and parcel of the Supreme Lord Krishna. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Mama evam sho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana that is the identity of soul. But when the soul misidentifies himself uh, uh, this, with this body, then that is called as false ego. So this is false ego. And the mind and intelligence have separate functions. So accordingly, uh, uh, the combination of these three, mind and false ego, makes certain kind of uh, uh, this uh, subtle body is developed because of these three functions and accordingly one gets the another gross body. So if one develops a, uh, a mentality like a, a cat or dog or pig, then he is going to get another body like cat, dog or pig. But if somebody can purify his mind, intelligence and false ego and develop, uh, develop uh, the true identity, true mentality, a spiritual if one can spiritualize his subtle body, which is Karan Sarir, then he no longer 
he no longer has to accept a, a, any material body, any gross body. Rather, he then develops the pure spiritual body and he is transferred to the spiritual world. No more birth, no more death again in this world. And he receives them. He, he can experience such Chitananda feature. So that is that that is another topic we'll discuss in the upcoming session. But now just I answered the question, what is Karan Sarin? So this is mechanism of the mind, intelligence mind. So we discussed this last time. Intelligence is decision maker. Mind is a store of our thoughts, unfulfilled desires, previous experiences. And five senses are input. Uh, we get input from these five senses. And then mind, which is having so many uh, de the desires, uh, previous material desires, and the mind is having experiences uh, because of past actions, whatever actions we have done in this life and in the previous lives also. So all these actions, each and every actions which we do, uh, that creates an impression. And those impressions are stored in the mind. And they, they are, in technical terms, they are known as samskaras. So everyone is having some kind of bad samskaras, bad impressions because of acting uh, sinfully in this or previous lives. And everyone has some kind of good samskaras, good impressions because of acting piously, piously, piously. Uh, so, but these bad and good samskaras, impressions, create obstacles uh, for a uh, living entity soul because, because of these uh, ex, uh, uh, these uh, samskaras, impressions, one develops the desires, further material desires. So because of bad samskaras, bad impressions, uh, uh, bad impressions are created because of acting sinfully. When one acts sinfully, then bad impressions are created. And because of these bad impressions, one gets the impetus or one uh, develops uh, a bad kind of material desires to act sinfully. And because of acting piously, piously uh, when one, one acts piously, so he gets good samskaras, good impression. And because of this, he gets the impetus to perform good activity, to act uh, piously. And both of these uh, things, these kinds of samskaras, good and bad activities, keeps a living entity entangled in this material world. And he has to again and again take birth. And again and again, he has to die. So this is the process. Uh, the mechanism of this mind. So in this way, uh, this mind and five senses and intelligence work. What is the function of intelligence? The so mind has a store of those thoughts and um, then desires develops because of previous experiences. And then mind uh, gives certain kinds of notifications, you can say. That, oh, I want to act like this. Impetus. Mind gives impetus. So when the mind gives impetus, then intelligence has to decide. Intelligence becomes like a uh, decision maker. Intelligence gives a decision that, okay, you do like this. Sanctions the desire of the mind. And not only he sanctions, intelligence sanctions, but intelligence uh, plans also how these uh, desires can be fulfilled. So in this way, this mechanism of mind is done and one remains entangled in this material world. So we uh, discussed through this example, chariot of the body. Five senses, mind, intelligence, and so this is how it functions. And Lord Krishna, that's why Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita clearly explains: if one cannot control his mind, then the mind can create havoc in his one's life and destroy him completely. That is why it's very much required to understand the functioning of mind through Bhagavad Gita, and then try to control mind and give good impressions and uh, transcendent divine impressions to mind then only mind will produce a, a good desires and then one can become successful in his life. So if mind is controlled, then it will be your friend or mind is uncontrolled, then it will be your greatest enemy. So the how can mind be controlled? This is the principle, ego principle. Ego principle means if you give the mind, because mind is uh, current career, uh, it is the cause of our uh, next body. Cause of it, it, it uh, creates our future results. Mind, mind is the main element actually in this entire system where soul is there, subtle body, mind is there, and this gross body is there. So, which is the most important? Although the soul is most important because only because of the presence of the soul, everything is going on. 
But as long as we are in this material world, mind uh, plays an important role. Uh, that is why elsewhere in the scripture it is said, Mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayo. Mind is the cause of one's bondage and, uh, or one's liberation from this material world. Or in other words, we can say, mind becomes the cause for one's success or one's failure. Uh, and how this uh, success or failure or bondage or liberation depends, that is Gigo principle. If you give mind proper input, then it will uh, do proper output. Uh, if you put garbage in, then garbage will come out. If you good in, good out, that is Gigo principle. So where do we get our scripts? That means uh, from where, what are the sources? From where this mind gets the input? Uh, then based on the inputs, the mind gives output. And when then we become either we become entangled or we become free from entanglement. So our scripts or the food, we can say in simple language, we can say, from where the mind gets the food or input, whether positive or negative. So, primarily, we get input for the mind from books we read, from movies we watch, and from music we hear, and friends we keep. These are primary sources of this input for the mind. And of course, movies we watch and uh, music we hear, it all also includes WhatsApp, YouTube, social media, everything comes into this category. So, so like, uh, so this, uh, and when somebody gives inputs to the mind, then based on what kind of input we have given, either positive, good or bad. So from time to time, when certain desires appear, when somebody wants to act for something, either sinfully or uh, piously, then mental dialogues happens according to input uh, the person has received or according to impressions the mind has. So mind feels, uh, I am an engineer, I should know how to hold a cigar at least. So in this way, the mind, and false ego also plays an important role. If somebody identifies himself with this and then he thinks and mind uh, gives the uh, notification, mind tells him that, oh, if you smoke, then you will feel cool then he is forced. Uh, but intelligence sometimes uh, says, no, no, it's bad because intelligence uh, knows uh, she has received the knowledge that if you smoke, then there will be so many, there's this kind of problems. So although it's, uh, intelligence, sometimes it, it stops us, but it's still because of the uh, bad impressions on the mind, one is forced to act sinfully. So this is the mechanism of mind. Uh, but if one can understand the science of soul, then he can very easily get rid of, uh, rid of this uh, uh, mental disturbances, mind controls. And he can easily control the mind using superior knowledge from Bhagavad Gita, which uh, can enlighten the soul and which can sharpen the intelligence. So this is the last section of this Discover Inner Self. Practical benefits of science, knowing science of soul. So what are the practical benefits? So nowadays we see so many uh, people, they fight amongst each other. So what divides us? That I am Hindu, you are Muslim. I am Indian, you are Pakistani. Uh, I am uh, this, I am that. So this, uh, these differentiations are there because of which uh, one fights with each other. So this differentiation is because of bodily concept of life. One doesn't understand. That is where this differentiation is there. I'm Hindu, Muslim, white, black, rich, poor, educated, illiterate, beautiful or ugly. Uh, because one thinks of himself as body. But if somebody can understand that I'm not this body, because of bodily consciousness, one divides oneself and fights. But if somebody can understand that I'm not this body, then there will be a real union. That is why Srila Prabhupada, who started his con society, he said, we have created real United Nations. So although in United Nations, they are, the attempt has been done, they tried that unity should be there, but actually there is no unity. Still the flags are increasing, number of flags are increasing. 
but real United Nation exists in ISKCON. In ISKCON, you can see whether one is European, Chinese, white, black, everyone together, they chant the holy name of God. I forget that we are different persons. Everyone knows that although the dress is different, but we all are sons of God. So real unity can happen only when one understands that I am not this body, I am a spirit soul. So this is a conference, people from all walks of life coming together for a higher cause, knowing that we are not these superficial bodies, but spirit souls, like the driver is different from the car. The soul consciousness, if one can come out of bodily consciousness to soul consciousness, then there will be real unity. So this is the first benefit of, practical benefit of knowing that I am not this body, I am a spirit soul. Then second is, one can rise above inferiority complex. Uh, many times it happens uh, that a person thinks, I am black, short, ugly. Will anybody look at me? Uh, who will get attracted to me? Who will marry me? Uh, like this, especially students, youth in colleges, when they are unable to perform nicely in, the, in their studies, and some of them, they are not so handsome or so beautiful. So they always feel inferiority complex because they think that I am this body. Uh, I have no talent in sports. I come from poor family. I don't know whether I'll earn my degree and pass out of college. Life doesn't seem worthy living because I am not like any of the great heroes. So in this way, a person uh, goes down and down and his all his moral values is finished. And he feels himself completely incapable of doing anything. And always he always remains in depression uh, because of this bodily consciousness. But if one can understand that I am not this body, uh, then but a pure soul with abundant potential, then he will understand all these defects which are superficially appearing in my body. They are not actually my defects. This is the bodily defects. But I am uh, a spirit soul, a spiritual being. And all these defects may go away with the progress of time. So my heart is full of love, joy, serenity, compassion for others. So one, if one understands that I am a spirit soul, I am not this body, then there will be no tension. Just like uh, uh, you are going for your studying in school or college. So someday, suppose if you wear old cloth, but still you understand, I am not this cloth, I am the same person. So you don't become demotivated because of the cloth. You go and you perform whatever your duties or action is there. Similarly, if one understands, I am not this body. So whether the body is uh, ugly or beautiful or short or, or fat or doesn't matter, black or white, uh, whether this, this gross body or whether this uh, subtle body, intelligence, whether I am very intelligent or not, doesn't matter because I am not this body. So it will increase his uh, enthusiasm, confidence, and whatever he has, he can use it properly and get <clears throat> right direction, right success in his life. At least he will not become demotivated. Whether he becomes very successful or not doesn't matter. But at least he will not uh, become demotivated and he will come out of depression, anxiety. So this is another <clears throat> very important benefit. Third benefit is positive outlook and attitude to life. He will develop good positive outlook for uh, outlook for the life because he understands I am not this body. So all bodily def uh, defects can be mitigated from time to time. And he will not blame anybody. He will cooperate and try to uh, find the ways how he can improve because he knows that this body is keep changing, body changes. So there is no problem. Right now, uh, I have so, uh, these, these, these uh, defects, but all these defects can be mitigated if I properly follow the rules and regulations. So in this way, one develops a great positivity. <laughs> so this fourth use is right use of resources. So if one can understand that I am not this body, I am a spirit soul, and the soul is part and parcel of God, so he will utilize all the resources for everyone's use. He will not discriminate. He will not kill poor animals. So in this way, right use of resources will be there. 
<clears throat> automatically all the crimes sinful activity will get destroyed so this is another so this is what we discuss in this session this we are concluding this session the summary is so we discuss am i matter or spirit soul so we understood that i am spirit soul uh, and i am not this uh, bunch of just chemical then we second aspect we discuss scientific proofs for existence of soul spirit soul common sense logic consciousness near death and out of body experience and reincarnation studies then we also discuss difference between living person and robot uh, and then we also discuss mechanism of mind and finally we discuss practical benefit of knowledge of soul so these are the practical benefits universal brotherhood rising of infinity complex positive outlook and attitude in life and right use of resources so in this way this uh, session discover inner self completes Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. If there are any questions, you can ask. From tomorrow, we will proceed to another session, very interesting session. Now we discussed uh, inner self. Uh, we discovered inner self. Now we are next session. We'll uh, we are going to discuss about discover genius within the creation. That's very important. Okay, Hare Krishna. So questions are there in the chat box. I'll take the questions. So when the physical body is no longer home for okay, that was the answer. So, we are always living with the presence of our body and our personality. So, how to get out of this dilemma where we assume everything which is happening is due to me. So, this dilemma is there because of the consciousness that I am this body. So, as long as we have this consciousness, wrong conception that I am this body, so we will remain entangled in this dilemma. But as soon as we understand properly that I am not this body, I am a spirit soul, completely different from this gross body, as well as uh, subtle body, mind, intelligence, ego, then we will act on the platform, uh, a spiritual platform, and whatever mat uh, duties are there, uh, will whatever activities on the material platform are there, we will perform it as a matter of duty, uh, completely understanding that my real duty is to... Um, uh, act, act uh, on the platform of the spirit soul. So in this way we can get out of this dilemma. How do we understand that we have to study as a matter of duty? What and how to do it? It's quite confusing. Please enlighten this topic. So this topic, uh, how to act as a matter of duty will be covered in great detail in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, especially with the verse number 47. I think uh, some of you might have heard this verse. Karmane vadikaraste ma phale sukadashana ma karma phale heturbhur ma te sangu a karmana. So Krishna explains this principle. How one can act uh, in this world as a matter of duty, whether it's study or job or any responsibility. Because only when one acts as a matter of duty, he can uh, peacefully and properly perform his duty without getting entangled into it. So this, uh, but in summary, I can just tell, just like in the previous question I answered. So uh, only when you come to the platform of under completely understanding that I am not this body, I am a spirit soul, with perfect understanding of this uh, self uh, as being the spirit soul, uh, we can uh, act on the platform of duty. Otherwise, it's not possible. As long as one thinks that I'm this body, so he has, he is forced from within to act for some material benefit. To act uh, uh, considering the result, he will, he will act. But uh, only when one understands that I'm not this body, then only he can get uh, rid or he can become detached from uh, thinking about the results. And then as a matter of duty, he can perform the duty. Otherwise, it's not possible. The next question is, why the senses and pleasures are never satisfied? Because we are not the senses. We are not this body. So because uh, our attempt to satisfy ourselves using the body is a misconception. We cannot satisfy. Just like suppose if you are feeling hungry and uh, if you feed the dress, this dress, if you put the dal inside the dress, rice, dal, sabji, chapati, everything. If you don't put within the mouth, then your hunger will not go away. Because you are just feeding the dress. 
So it doesn't matter how much you feed the dress, you are not going to uh, feel satisfied. So similarly, we are a split soul, but we think that I'm this body. And then with this misconception, we try to satisfy ourselves by trying to give satisfaction to the senses. So how is it possible? This is not possible. So you cannot get satisfaction, real satisfaction. If one wants to get real satisfaction, then he has to act for the satisfaction of the soul. That means he has to act on the platform of a spirit soul. So this is a gradual process. As we proceed ahead with the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, you will understand how we can act on the platform of soul, how we can get rid of this uh, misconception. So next question is, plants are also jiva, but they don't have an aspect of consciousness. No, they also have consciousness, thinking, feeling, willing, but it is very covered. So we cannot understand. Uh, Dr. Jagdish Chandra Bose has proved this, that plants also feel. Uh, and there, there are researches done in some of the countries that if you keep the plant somewhere where they are not properly treated, they are mistreated uh, with ill words, then those plants, they don't grow nicely. But if, uh, if you keep some plants uh, somewhere where a nice environment is there, uh, where the, the gardener, uh, they love the plants, like their, their children. Uh, so if, if somebody takes care of the plants and trees like their own children, then they grow very nicely. This is practical. That means they, have, they also have feeling, thinking feeling. But this is very much covered, so we can't experience uh, uh, means uh, directly, but we can uh, understand through the result. Maybe feeling this, so there are exceptions. No, so it's there. Okay. Is your body okay? Defects hai, khud khud hai. Body ka body. Yes, we have to consider the bodily things also. We are not denying. As long as we are in this body, in this material world, so we have to take care of the body. But the purpose is, we are what we are discussing, trying to discuss, that we should not remain in the misconception, ignoring that I am this body. So that we should overcome. Otherwise, we will always remain entangled. So, okay. So with this, uh, we'll conclude here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. So tomorrow again, we'll discuss with the new session. Hare Krishna. So I request everyone, please come on time. And invite all other your friends also so that they can also attend and take advantage of it. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare.